as we've finished our basic discussion of how FinFETs are built and how to lay them out and what kind of problems they brought us, um, let's uh, start discussing um, some current trends. So before we start that, I want to uh, note some stuff about process node naming. Okay, so scaling has traditionally been slower than 0.7x uh, per node. So this is kind of the Moore's Law curve of 0.7x per two years. This is the actual scaling of the, 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 the pitches. Um, and it's pretty amazing because this is the single exposure limit, which is around 80 nanometers of 193 nanometer um, uh, laser. Okay, and so now we've gone over to the EUV, which gives us this uh, real benefit. But this is how the pitches have been scaled. We've actually stayed at about 14 nanometer physical gate lengths for, for a long time. We haven't gone under them. Um, the uh, uh, the node naming is really just a marketing number, and it gives us like an equivalent power performance area type of a name. And Intel, which has always been saying that their 10 nanometer is like TSMC's uh, 7 nanometer, they actually changed their naming structure to kind of uh, um, be the equivalent to what uh, TSMC and maybe Samsung and so forth have been using. So uh, really, it's just a marketing type of thing. It, it doesn't actually say anything about the, the critical dimensions or so forth when you say five nanometers or three nanometers, et cetera. Um, another interesting thing about this is that there are these intranodes. If you look at, uh, these are from Intel, they discuss, you know, uh, a 14, a 14 plus, a 14 plus plus, a 10, 10 plus, 10 plus plus. These are intranodes. What it, what it actually means is that they come up with their basic uh, process, with their basic process steps and so forth. But even on their roadmap, they know that they're going to um, do all kinds of process optimizations and all kinds of enhancements that improve their yield and improve their performance over the lifetime of that uh, process node. And so they, they give it a different process name with these pluses or or whatever. Um, TSMC does the same type of thing. And really, um, they're, they're on their roadmap. Roadmap. So these are planned out um, improvements that they're going to have. They just go and they, you know, they introduce something uh, as early as possible, and then they introduce another type of thing once they get the yield uh, up and once they're able to I integrate it into their fabs and so forth. So this is on their roadmap, and it's done uh, commonly. Um, and you can see here how the the, the pitches of the uh, different uh, 22, 14, and 10 nanometer process have gone down, but the gate length uh, they pretty much stay the same. So um, the next uh, step is squeezing out what's left in FinFETs. So this is really tough after we've gone through four FinFET generations. And realistically, there had never been any low-hanging fruit with each, with each new node. We just really try to do all these different process innovations, which, which are pretty amazing that the, that the process engineers are able to do them. Um, but they're really only giving incremental gain. And when you say, you know, 5% for a ring os os oscillator frequency, that's really a big deal. But there are uh, many areas of development. However, none of the none of them are stones that are unturned. So these have all been things that have been done. Short channel control, you want narrower fins. You're trading this off versus mobility reduction. Um, channel mobility, you want a high uh, mobility fin material. Um, uh, um, uh, effective oxide thickness, you want higher K, you want thinner and uh, more reliable gate dielectrics, device variation, you want fin uniformity and ge geometry control, volumeless v uh, VT tuning only on high K uh, dipoles, not using uh, 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 work function metals, um, uh, the contact resistance, you want to try to make that better, the gate resistance, you want to have some sort of a better type of deposition that will improve that, um, the, the Parasitic capacitances, you want to have different kind of gate spacers, maybe out of air gaps, and uh, middle end of the line and back end of the line resistance. You want to, you know, uh, change the, the resistance uh, of the metal by using these types of cobalt and ruthenium and so forth and improve the resistance of the vias. So these are di different things that have been done. Um, one of the things that you, you'll probably be hearing is a uh, fin depopulation or it might be called vertical scaling. So uh, a, a big uh, deal about these types of uh, process scaling over the last uh, several generations is what we call design technology co-optimization or DTCO. So um, what we're trying to do is not actually scale the critical dimensions of the process, but scale the results. So uh, for example, if we can make our standard cells smaller, we're getting higher density and that keeps Moore's law going up, even though we may not have changed, as I said, you know, 
the the gate length is still going to be something like 14 nanometers okay for uh forever uh, what you could say so one of the ways to do that is by fin depopulation we could have had here um at 10 nanometers you know have three uh, uh our standard cells would have three fins in each transistor then going down to seven nanometers only have two fins in each transistor and at five nanometers uh, you know have a better pitch but only two fins per each transistor three nanometers go down to one fin per transistor and then at two nanometers um uh, reducing our fin pitch and having one uh fin per each transistor, but I don't know how you can go under one fin. Well, there are ways, there are fork sheets and complementary moss and kind of things, which you could say that's even less than one fin per transistor. So this is fin depopulation. Of course, it trades off with uh, all kinds of uh, problems uh, because, um, you know, you get uh, worse reliability. On the other hand, um, you're, you get more bang for your buck with a uh, lower, lower number of uh, transistors, so uh, of, of fins. So the fact that we added, you know, we went from one fin to three fins doesn't mean we necessarily get three times the current or, or something like that uh, because uh, it just doesn't scale linearly. So it's not that bad a thing to reduce your fins other than the, the problem with the reliability and that's something that the fabs really work at. But really, fin de depopulation has been something that's been done. By the way, this is just an estimation. I'm not exactly sure how, how it's uh, gone on in each of the foundries processes up till now, but this was kind of a, a, a perceptive type of a, uh, of a graph that I found from Synopsis. Okay, so um, the, the next step really is what we call the gate all around transistor. So FinFETs, uh, they don't have perfect uh, short channel control um, if you're going down with your, you know, your, your gate length. Um, we, we want better short channel control. So our problem with our subthreshold slope and our ion to eye off ratio um, is, is still not perfect with FinFETs. We only have three sides on the FinFET and we still get this kind of parasitic uh, capacitance to, to the uh, substrate that, uh, that hurts us. So you, you know our FinFETs, they have these sides over here and they still get the uh, parasitic capacitance that uh, doesn't give us full channel control. So the next step would be to do a gate all around, which is something we've been trying to do for many years. And a nano wire was the basic way of doing it. We just have wires going through and we cover the wire on four sides by a gate and then we get really much better control. We don't have almost any parasitic capacitance. However, um, what the fabs have come up with is that it's better to make a nano sheet than a nano wire. So we have this type of, a, of a, I could say, connected nano wires. And this is really what has um, come out as the, probably the winner and what's going on. And even Intel just had a big, uh, a, a big announcement a couple of months ago about how they call it nano ribbons. Uh, they're going to be doing that in their um, next process node. Um, uh, and so uh, nano sheets are a gate all around structure. It's not perfect. You still have, you know, on the bottom level, this parasitic capacitance and so forth, but it's much better than a FinFET uh, already was. Okay, so here's a demonstration of a, a fabricated stack nano sheet. It's pretty amazing because uh, see these layers there, this, uh, you know, the, the channel material and the oxide that's around it, the uh, high K dielectric that's around it, and around that you have the, the metal gate that's around that, and these are kind of floating in the air in some way while you're, 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 um, you're doing this planar type of process going up and up and up. So it's pretty cool. I, I, I can't explain to you how this is fabricated, but they do know how to fabricate these things pretty well now. So here's a kind of a 3D um, interpolation of this type of thing. Okay. Um, so um, here you can see on the table on the left, on the right here, what Intel, TSMC, and Samsung call uh, their nano sheets. So Intel, I, uh, they call it a ribbon FET or a nano ribbon. Um, TSMC calls it a gate all around FET. It's supposed to come in at their two nanometer node. Um, and Intel puts it in their 20A, that's a 20 angstrom and a 18 angstrom node. They're supposed to be in 2024, 2025. TSMC said something like end of uh, 2023. And Samsung has announced the MBC FET um, uh, in their 3, uh, 3GAE and 3GAP processes, uh, which are already supposed to come out this year, uh, according to uh, their announcements. And we'll see exactly what the timelines are and so forth, but this uh, will be happening very soon. So um, with the nano sheets, so if we had our fin fits over here where we had our singular fins, which were kind of quantum, Nano sheets again provide us with this uh, W, and you can possibly even change the W. It doesn't necessarily have to be quantized, so it's kind of 
more in that essence is a more like uh, on a layout perspective like a planar transistor. Um, however, uh, something that's different, and I mentioned it before, on the FinFET we had the sidewalls, which were um, you know a one one zero. Uh, orientation, which was really good for the mobility of the holes. Um, now in nano sheets, really um, the sidewalls are, are are almost negligible, and all of the current is flowing on the kind of planar direction, which is the one zero zero surface. And that was really good for electrons, and not very good for holes. And it makes the n losses stronger again. So you might have to again uh, have a beta ratio where your p losses are going to be wider than your n losses. Okay, um, we need to have inner spacers to reduce the gate to source drain capacitance, which becomes really even worse uh, here. So these are types of things that are, are, are being uh, introduced in these types of nodes. And um, we're going to have uh, 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 parasitic planar frets below the nanosheet, so we're going to have to disable them. So there are all kinds of interesting uh, phenomena that come up, even with this change from a uh, fin fet to a gate all around type of a structure. Another thing that I wanted to mention with these uh, current uh, these current trends, um, and this again was in this Intel uh, announcement a couple of months ago about their their uh, upcoming nodes. They said that they were going to put in backside power delivery, and I imagine that the other fabs will will be um, t saying that they're going to do this as well. It's something that IMEC has been showing for quite a long time. So what is it is exactly? It's you want to now bury the power rails under the transistors. So um, so power rails in general, uh, what they're supposed to do is they're supposed to cause us to have you know as low resistance as we can between where we drive the uh, the uh, current or the the voltage uh, into the chip until it gets to the actual transistors themselves, and therefore we need a lot 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 of these uh, routing layers that take up a lot of um, uh, expensive routing resources, which we could use to you know connect between uh, different transistors and gates and so forth. Um, so. Uh, but they're very regular, and we know what they want to do, and we want to use as much as possible. So why should we put them on top of the transistors and have all kinds of uh, flexibility? Why don't we just stick them under the transistors? And that's what basically a buried power rail is. So the first uh, idea is just to bury you know, VDD and VSS that come into our rows. If we can bury them underneath, we don't have to take up you know, that expensive metal zero or metal one or metal two layer, depending on you know which kind of process you're using. We can have them at a metal minus one type of layer, and then and they won't take up any space in the standard cell. We can gain some area and, and so forth. But even a better idea would be to put some sort of a like a, a through a, a, a through silicon via over here and go down into lower layers where we could have real thick metals that could deliver um, the power to the whole uh, the the whole die, and then we could get really uh, very good IR drop over to our to our gates themselves. And so this really can enable us to reduce the design area, a heavy improvement on IR drop and lower the amount of voltage groups that we have, and ultimately reduce the power. So um, here Intel is showing how they do it, and you can see these big backside power deliveries that then are, go up to the actual rails. This is kind of a stack of what an Intel uh, um, uh, next generation type of metal stack will have, you know, their regular metals and so forth, and then you have the backside power delivery underneath. Okay, and you can see these types of things here in an actual picture of this being fabricated. So this is uh, really um, uh, around the corner coming in. So uh, some conclusions to my talk that, that I gave you guys today. So this is an important, I guess, for all of us uh, VLSI people, an important um, quote by Philip Wong of TSMC. And TSMC knows what they're talking about, right? Uh, and he says that Moore's law is well and alive. It's not slowing down. It's not even sick. And with that, he put a, you know this uh, type of plot uh, um, in hot chips that showing that 2050 and beyond, he still sees you know, how Moore's Law is continuing there. So all these people, they keep saying that Moore's Law is dead for the last 20 years. I guess, uh, I think Philip Wong knows a bit better uh, what he's talking about than they do. Uh, SOC area uh, scaling is now driven primarily by device innovation, the device technology co-optimization, and less by feature size reduction. So again, um, you know, Moore's Law, maybe, uh, uh, as I said here, it's still alive and well, but it just depends on how you define it. So we're not 
taking the L and making it smaller and smaller, and we're not going to get to you know one nanometer and below one nanometer and just uh, you know turning into zero or whatever. There are different ways that we go uh, by using this device innovation and especially this device technology co-optimization and our, enable this improvement in PPA or in in, in scaling or in density um, in, in kind of uh, different ways than just standard uh, making the the length of the transistor smaller. Okay, and um, as circuit designers, what you you need to do is you need to understand and exploit technology to achieve maximum PPA benefits and efficient design productivity. And it really gets harder, so you need to be better at what you're doing. And uh, I think it's important to really understand what's going on in order to really be uh, good and uh, achieve what you want to do. So some of the uh, references that I used, again, were Alvin Loke's talks. He gave several of them that you can find all over the internet, which are great. Or Nahum, who uh, provided a talk for, for my class last year. And some other, uh, I mean, a lot of other sources all over the internet. So that was all I have to tell you about advanced processes at this point. And maybe in another few years, I'll do an update of this with the things that happen in the future.